Normally, I quite like quack products on eBay because it's fun to buy them, reverse engineer them and say it's a quack product. But things are taking a very, very dark twist at the moment, particularly in this time of viral pandemics. So this particular product is called Portable Sterilized UVC Light Germicidal UV Lamp Home Handheld Disinfection Hot. And it came from Superfascione. And this is another fake uh, ultraviolet sterilizing lamp. I don't know of any large LED sterilizing lamps yet. So this one is the classic uh, disco style. It's an ultraviolet. Uh, it is kind of near ultraviolet. It's that deep purpley color. Quite nice. And if you get fluorescent fabrics, then it will make them fluoresce. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So here is the purple and there's the fluorescing fabric. But you put this in your hand I would normally expect this is a terrible test to do. I wouldn't do this with a real UVC tube. If you put it in the back of your hand, it will effectively cause damage to the skin. And then when you sniff it, it produces a very distinctive smell. But I'm not getting that smell. Not terribly scientific, but trust me when I say that I do not think this is UVC at all. Partly because... Real UVC LEDs have to have a special construction because otherwise little resin ones like this would be damaged by the UV. So they have a metal body and a sort of quartz window and uh, they emit virtually no light. It, they might You might see a very, very faint glow, but the because LEDs are single wavelength devices, they do not effectively emit light. Quite often they're used with either another LED in the package or one in the circuit board so you can tell it's actually lit because otherwise you'd be staring directly at something dangerous without knowing it. But another product I got recently and featured in the video was this one. It was basically an ultraviolet disco light that they said UV disinfection lamp and I raised an issue with the seller and they replied, hello. The lamp you bought is an ultraviolet lamp. It is indeed sterilizable. You can check it online. The UV lamp has sterilization function. Can you tell us why you think its description does not match? Where exactly does this description not match? Isn't its light purple? Yes, it is purple. Best regards, Mary. Yes, so, yes, I, I'd agree it's a purple light, Mary. It's not germicidal. But it's getting a lot darker than that. Let's take a look at things like this, and I've just ordered one of these. I've got another lamp on order that the listing has been taken down by eBay. Maybe they're actually starting to do things about this. But uh, this one, I'll show you the other part of this listing. Uh, incidentally, I'm going to take this part anyway and look inside it because, you know, they're usually quite well built. But I'll do that that then. So this is based in standard 2835 LEDs, like a standard GU10 LED downlight. Usually based in a capacitive dropper, but I'm not really sure what will be in these. Sometimes they have different circuitry. However, look at the colour. Now, this is a real ultraviolet lamp, UVC. And if I uh, activate this, after a time delay, this will turn on. And uh, I shall just let it do that, and then I'll turn it straight back off once it lights, once you've seen the colour. It's lit. So I'll turn this light off. It's not terribly bright, but it produces that distinctive sort of bluey green colour, a nice turquoisey colour. Right, let's turn that off because I don't wish to be irradiated with that. These ones are real. The ones with the glass tubes are generally real, the clear glass tubes. But do you notice how the colour is very similar? I was thinking, so what are they using then? And I saw these LEDs and I thought, oh, I know what they're using. They're using ice blue LEDs. Ice blue LEDs are basically the same construction as a white LED, but they use the blue chip or an ultraviolet chip. But instead of using tons of the yellow phosphor to create a, a rich white light, they just use the slightest dusting. So it becomes blue with a slight pastel shade. And it looks like this. Recognize the color? That lovely, pallid, ghostly, ultraviolet-like blue, except for one small important detail. This is just light blue light. It's pastel blue light. That is almost certainly what these are doing because they are not UVC LEDs and yet they're being sold not just as the ultraviolet for killing the bacteria. Here's all the bacteria, but they're actually saying O3. And as far as I know, there are no commercially available UVC LEDs that go narrow, a small enough wavelength to actually break up the oxygen into O3. So that is just, even this one here won't create uh, ozone, this type of LED is around about 275 nanometers, I think. So it's just barely on the edge of UVC that it's going to have that sterilizing effect, but it's not well into the spectrum.
which again means that these glass or quartz type tubes are the one to go for. But anyway, that's that bit of the rant over. I shall put my fake UV lights out the way. I've ordered one of these. We'll see how long it takes to come through. Let's take this to bits because that's what we do. This one does have uses. Um, it's based on a mechanics light. It's got this heavy magnet and then powerful one. And it's got an adjustable ball joint and then so you can actually aim it. And you can stick it under your bonnet and then tilt it and have it pointing down where you're working. And what's really nice about these, they're fully rechargeable via micro USB. And they've got the click on, click off knob. But as you turn it up, it gets brighter. Now, let me show you another thing. These aren't terribly well matched. As I bring this up, you'll see that the LEDs are all a bit mottled looking. And that one in particular there is not lighting too brightly at all. But uh, as you then go up, it, you know, it lights up quite brightly. And there's no flicker because it's using uh, an analog system. It's ba basically a transistor being used as a current limiter. So that the, the LEDs don't strove or flicker at all. They're really nice lights. Uh, I've made a separate video about these, but I shall open this one up. Let's open this one up. I could see a use for this in a workshop where uh, you were looking for leaks of coolant with the fluorescent, the, um, what is it, sodium, sodium fluorescent uh, leak tracer dye. That's the stuff that glows bright fluorescent green, the liquid. When you see the vehicles leaking their coolant and you see that sort of radioactive toxic spill seeping across the road from it. So let's get the screws out of this and open it up and see what's inside. Hopefully we'll be up to the same standards as the others, but you know, is it really worth getting something like this in a garage just to find that sort of problem? Or is this, is this repurposed from being a garage uh, leak finder to being this fake germicidal type light? Or if they just made it purely for this industry, I'm suspicious that they've made, they've just said, let's make a wand, an ultraviolet wand, and say that it's sterilizing when it really isn't. I don't know of any effect that UVA, or the in this case, near UVA has. I think it's 395 nanometer. For this one, it's quite, it's a, just a deep violet. Similar construction others all plugged together, which is nice. A little heat sink in the back of the LEDs, which is good. The LED circuit board, uh, which plugs in there. Let's get the circuit board out. There's the potentiometer circuit board. There's the battery and 18650. I shall test that afterwards and see what the capacity is. Usually they've been pretty good. They've been round about the two amp hour, but that probably means this will be a shitty one amp hour one. And the circuit board is pretty much like the others. Right, tell you what, I'm going to uh, just expand on this a little bit. I'm going to take a picture of this and then we can explore the circuitry in this together. Reverse engineering complete. Let's begin the analysis. I have to say that they threw in a bit of a mind twister because the red is actually negative and the black is positive on this lithium cell, but fortunately it's correct in the circuit board. That could have been very exciting. So look at the circuit board. We have the USB port here for the plug in the charging supply, and that pretty much goes straight across to the 4056 chip, TC4056A, which has one resistor, 152, that's 152 zeros, 1 1.5 thousand ohms, and that sets a current, charge current of approximately 780 milliamps. There are two positions for capacitors, which rather naughtily, they should be occupied, but they're not occupied. Maybe they've had problems with ceramic capacitors going kaboom. Uh, there's a 100 ohm resistor, 10 and 10, um, giving 100 ohms, and then two LEDs, one apparently red and one blue. I've only seen the red one lit, charging. Uh, I've not seen the blue one yet lit, lit yet, which uh, I guess is charged. Uh, one notable difference to some of the other circuits is this little chip here called a 3130, which is apparently an abbreviation for BRCL3130ME, and it's a protection chip for the battery. It's in series of the negative, and it's got this 100 ohm resistor here and a capacitor here just to provide a stabilised scent supply for the positive rail, and if it detects a voltage going too high, too low, or short circuit conditions, it will cut out. That's good. 
Uh, there's a couple of 1 ohm resistors in parallel here for the LEDs. There's the main switching MOSFET, which is an A192, um, which uh, the A192 is the AO3401 4 amp 30 volt transistor, which is quite impressive. And then there's another, uh, an A1SHB MOSFET, which is used with this res uh, chain of resistors and this potentiometer resistor here uh, to create a sort of potential divider to control the intensity of the LEDs. Let me bring in the schematic. This will make things a bit clearer, hopefully, or it might not make things clearer. So there's the USB supply come in here, goes to the 4056, that, there's the sense resistor, there's the two LEDs and their resistor, and then it goes to the lithium cell, uh, which has that little protection circuit with that 100 ohm resistor there, and mystery capacitor, I could have tried measuring the capacitor. I'm going to guess it's 100 nano for this capacitor, and that just provides a sense, a, a sort of ripple-free sense for the chip to for the protection. That then gives a supply of, I've written, plus 3.6 volts. That will be anywhere between about, say, 2.5 to 4.2, depending on the state of the charge of this lithium cell, the 18650. The LEDs are switched by this MOSFET here, the A19T, via the two 1 ohm resistors in parallel giving half an ohm and then that huge circuit of LEDs. Depending on the voltage, it's a P-channel MOSFET, which means that if you pull up to positive, it turns it off, and the more you pull it down towards negative, the more it turns it on. And they're using a potential divider, a variable resistor, to vary the voltage in that, because that then, instead of just being on and off, it can vary, it can act like a resistor, and it can regulate the current through the LEDs. Just wait, this will get a bit warm when it does that, but the main advantage of that is that there's no strobing or flickering of the LEDs. It's a very simple, linear uh, regulator that can vary the LEDs between off and full intensity. There is one other little quirk here. So this resistor normally pulls the transistor off. When you turn the knob, it's got a 50k potentiometer and a switch that is then activated and that then provides that slight current into this, well voltage actually, into the MOSFET because MOSFETs are voltage driven so to speak. They, they don't really pass current, it's, it's like a capacitively isolated transistor. It just goes by the presence, well, field effect transistor, the electrical field is what actually switches it. But that then goes down through these other resistors which cap the uh, sort of intensity. But one of those is bridged. And normally this transistor here, which is an A1SHB, which is the P-channel partner to the A2SHB, that has its gate connected to the USB plus supply. And when it is, because it's P-channel, when you plug into the charger, it turns this transistor off. But when it's, uh, is that right? Hold on, let me think, let me think. When you plug it into the charger, it turns it off, it does. Yep, yeah. oh yeah, it does. Uh, normally, if it wasn't charging, this MOSFET would be turned on by a slight leakage current through the charge circuitry. And uh, it would bridge out this 33k resistor, which means that the LEDs would be brighter. But when you plug it into charge, it uh, turns off, adds an extra 33k into the resistance of that circuit, which means this MOSFET doesn't turn on as full. So what that means is that when it's charging, I, th I guess there's two reasons for that. It's so that it's not running at high current while it's trying to also charge, which means it would just never, ever charge. Um, it means that because it's running at lower current, whatever charge current's going in, it will be able to actually, through the circuitry, it will be able to keep topping the batch up at the same time as it's in use. But it also means that if you just plugged it into a charger and left it set to full all the time, it's going to protect the LEDs here from uh, just being, you know, just run at full intensity all day long because you've got it plugged in at the wall. And that is it. A very weird but very common style of circuit. The difference here is it's got that extra protection circuit here, which is quite significant. That little chip there. But it's a, a very typical mechanics work light of that style. The circuitry is quite acceptable. Just strange that they've decided to stick ultraviolet LEDs and then pass it off as a fake germicidal lamp. But there we go. I'm looking forward to the other LEDs arriving if they do. One that I've, a big cob, oh, that was the wrong, a big cob uh, lamp, which uh, looks as though it's got the, uh, the uh, those 
Well, I'll show you these LEDs, the ice white LEDs, that ice blue. That's what I was looking for, ice blue. It looks as though it's fitted with these for visual effect. Um, but uh, that listing has been taken down, so I don't know if it's going to arrive or not. Uh, I don't know if sure when I should open up. A, I'll wait to see if it arrives and then open up a thing. But I know it's kind of going to be fake, so maybe I should open one up anyway. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'll wait first and see what happens. Uh, but uh, certainly I'm looking forward to the other products arriving. But um, as far as I'm concerned, if you want a UVC light, it's going to have to be the quartz glass type tubes like this or the full size ones. Um, because uh, all the LED products that are being sold as wands and lamps are fake at the moment, which isn't very good. But there we go. Interesting subject, nonetheless.